the goal behind dynamic routing protocols is the same as with static routes. That is, to build a valid routing table so a router can forward packets to the right place. But the approach they take, it's very different. When we configure a static route, we do two things. We tell the router about a remote network and we tell it how to get there. This is a manual process, which can be a pain when you have a lot of routes. Dynamic routing protocols have a different approach. Routers running one of these protocols will find other connected routers. We call these neighbors or peers. The router does this by sending out hello messages on its interfaces. When it gets a hello in response, it knows there's another router there. These routers then form a neighbor relationship. They use this relationship to share information about the subnets they know and how to get there. Some routing protocols will use this information to build a full map of the network. Others only concern themselves with direct neighbors. This is more like following road signs to get to a destination. Each router will advertise their connected networks. They're saying, if you want to reach this network, send your packets this way. A neighboring router then receives this advertisement. It will then store a copy of the route in a table in memory. If this is the best route, it installs it in the routing table. We'll look at that in more depth later. When a router learns a route, it will share it with other routers it knows about. Each of these will store the route in memory and advertise to their neighbors. Convergence is the term we use when the network has finished learning about all the routes. After the network has converged, routers continue to advertise their network. This is their way of saying they're still here. What happens when a router learns the same route from two different places? In this example, a router is learning the 10.0.10.0 network from two different neighbors. In a case like this, the routing protocol selects the best path to the destination. This path goes into the routing table. The method it uses is a bit like spanning tree. Each path will have a metric. This is a number that shows how long the path is. The routing protocol will see that one path has a lower metric than another. The lower the metric, the better the path. There are a few different routing protocols. Each has their own way of calculating the metric and deciding which path is better. We'll look at that some more in a moment. This will give you an idea of how routing protocols handle changes in the topology. When a router or link in the network fails, the advertisements along that path stop. When a router notices this, it updates its list of neighbors. It may need to update the routing table too. This may mean that the router has to remove some routes. Or there may be alternate paths available. In this case, the routing protocol adds the alternate route to the routing table. This enables the network to automatically work around failures. We can see then that there are a few advantages to using dynamic routing. Routes are automatically learned from neighbors. The best path is automatically selected. If we add a router or link, we don't need to manually configure routes. And if a router or link fails, the routing table can be automatically updated. Static routes still have their place though. In some cases, they're quick and simple and they do help during troubleshooting. Static routes are also more lightweight than routing protocols. Routing protocols generate a small amount of traffic and use CPU and memory on the router. Generally, this is not a big concern, but in large networks, it can be an important factor. If you have a moment, take a look at these quiz questions to see if you've got a solid grasp on what we've been discussing.